Hello and welcome to the fourth update of the Thames Murders. We're going to start this one off with a visit to Juan Escobedo. I hope I pronounced that correctly. What were you doing at Roland Jacquard's house this morning? I didn't do nothing to nobody. Leave me alone. What? You were spotted at the scene of the crime. Did you murder Jacquard? I didn't murder nobody. It was Marco. Marco, my brother. Thank you. Wow. He gave him up pretty quickly. And now we're going to visit Jeffrey Farber. I've just spent a grueling day at the Bank of England and Drummond's trying to determine the extent of the loss Mr. Ravel has caused our firm. How do you suppose he managed it? It was so simple. Once he knew the accounts and their account numbers, it was only a matter of transferring the money into letters of credit or any account he chose. How did he learn the account numbers? Now, that's the mystery. Neil Patterson and myself are the only ones who have access to that information. Is there no one else? Yeah, there's Mrs. Lindsay, but all of her dealings with the firm are handled through a solicitor, a Charles Abad. Abad? Do you mean a Todd? Hmm? Oh yes, uh, that's the chap. And now we are going to return to Millbrink Prison. Cyril Maud? A bad egg he was. Nothing but trouble the whole time he was here. If it isn't too much of an inconvenience, perhaps I could speak with one of his friends. Friends? <laughs> Maud wouldn't know what the word meant. The closest thing he had to a friend was his cellmate, uh, Curtis Twiggs. I don't know which one of them was worse. Then Mr. Twiggs will have to do. Perhaps he will speak with me. I'm not sorry to say he's no longer here. He was released back into our unsuspecting society in 1886. Surprisingly, I've not heard of him since. I'm sure my gain is society's laws. That was a weird sounding pipe at the end there. Anyway, let's go and visit the Tankerville Club. Do you recall if Roland Jacquard had dinner here on the evening of May 30th? He arrived at 7.30 p.m. and was joined by Mrs. Kathleen Lindsay. He ordered a bottle of Gros Rose, 76, to accompany their duck. Uh, I'm not interested in what they ate, but I am curious to know when they left. They left at midnight. Did anyone else join them? Colonel Sebastian Moran at 9.10. He had one drink with them and left at 9.45. Was that the last time you saw Jacquard? No, 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 no. The last time I saw Mr. Jacquard was June 1. He spent most of the afternoon in the game room, came into the dining room around 8.30. He had dinner alone and left at 9.30. Thank you. This has been most illuminating. Yeah, actually, it has been quite illuminating. That was a good choice. And Mrs. Lindsay has been mentioned several times. So, oh, sorry. Yep. Kathleen Lindsay, sorry. So now we're going to visit her. This has all been very difficult. You see, I knew three of the victims. Charles, Charles Attard was my solicitor, Roland Jacquard a friend, and Nathan Ravel worked for my late husband's firm, Lindsay and Company. For the life of me, I can't imagine why anyone would want to kill them. Did the victims know one another, Mrs. Lindsay? Roland and Charles were friends. In fact, Roland introduced me to Charles. I suppose Charles must have met Ravel when he went to the firm to handle my business affairs, but he never mentioned it. I don't think Roland knew Ravel at all. I can't imagine how he would. It seems like a lot of the victims knew each other in some form or another. And lastly, we are going to visit H.R. Murray with the Irregulars for the third time of finding a report.
And there we have it. Again, screenshots will be posted in the thread. And that is it for the moment. I will see you again in two or three days time. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.